Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, checking out what's new with iOS 9.3. So we're going to take a look at some of the major and minor new features. Now, one of the major new features is called Night Shift, and we get a new toggle in the control center to activate it. So you can see front and center is Night Shift, and when you click that on, you can see the display develops this sort of a warm amber color. And the idea here is to strip away the blue color, which can be disruptive to your circadian rhythm. So if you have trouble sleeping, your phone or tablet might be the culprit. Now you can adjust this under settings, you just have to go to display and brightness and we go to this new night shift section and this allows us to adjust the intensity here so we can do less warm all the way to more warm which is a very orange color and you do get a warning here that tells us that some features may be disruptive by this feature you can schedule this so you can turn this on at specific times of day and you can select that or you can set this to automatically kick in with sunset and sunrise and of course the phone knows this automatically and will determine this based on your location you can also manually enable this, so this will stay on until tomorrow morning, which would be about 7 a.m. This is also available on your iPad. You can see the toggle right here in the lower right corner, and again, you have the same features under settings. Incidentally, night shift mode is not available when you activate low power mode, so if you turn that on, you can see that is now grayed out. The Note app also picks up the ability to hide certain apps behind a password or a fingerprint. So if I'm looking at a note here, I go up to the action icon in the upper right corner and now I have this option to lock the note. So if I go to lock the note, this will prompt me to enter a password if I haven't established one already. And this is separate from your passcode to unlock your phone. So I can go ahead and either use a uh, password or just a passcode and that's what I'm going to do right here. Of course, you can also specify a hint and you can enable Touch ID so this will work with Touch ID. So with this feature enabled I can go ahead and lock the note and now it's not visible and in order to regain access to it I will have to enter in my passcode or use my fingerprint. Now if I want to get rid of this just go up to the action icon again and remove the lock. Now with these new features, the Notes app does pick up some new settings, so if we go to settings under Notes, we'll find that we can sort our notes by date edited, date created, or title, so we have new options there. But you can also see we can manage our password from here, and this is where we can reset our password or change it. So if we want to reset our password, we just have to enter in our Apple ID. The News app has also been updated with a smarter algorithm, so the For You tab will be filled up with stories better related to what you're interested in. But they've also done some interface changes here, so for example, if you're looking at a story here and you swipe to the right, right or swipe to the left in this case, you can either like it, save it, or share it. So you have those options here. Swipe to the right and you get to dislike, mute the channel, or report it. Now these actions change their appearance depending on the content you're swiping on here. So you can see with a larger photograph filling up the space, those icons shrink down. Now this interface is a little different on the iPad here. So instead of swiping, you just tap and hold to get to those same features. 3D Touch has been expanded in a number of ways with iOS 9.3, especially with quick actions. So certain apps have picked up quick actions like the weather apps, so if we tap and hold, we can quickly jump to our current weather conditions or one of our favorite locations or add new ones right from here. So again, quick actions takes us right to that action instead of having to dig through the app to do so. Under stocks, tap and hold will bring up search. With the health app, we get to show medical ID or show your dashboard. Even the compass app picks up some 3D touch features like start compass or start the level. More useful are quick actions for settings. So we have battery, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. So if we want to quickly enable low power mode, that's one way of getting to it without having to dig through the settings. Also, if you want to quickly pair a new Bluetooth device, again, same action here, takes us right to the Bluetooth control panel. The iTunes Store and the App Store also pick up a few new quick actions, like purchased and view downloads for the iTunes Store, and purchased and update all for the App Store. These apps also pick up 3D touch features like peak and pop. So for example, if you're within the music store here, you can peek at an item here. Again, just peek at it and force touch it to pop it out to fill the screen and you can go back. Again, it works very well and it's nice to have this feature here. This also works within the App Store. So if we go to the App Store here, just peek at an item, release it, peek at an item and press harder to open it all the way. The Wallet app has also been updated. So cards within the Wallet app will have these little icons in the lower left corner for the corresponding app. So if you want to quickly launch into it, you just have to tap that and it takes you right to that app. The health app also picks up a new widget available from your uh, health data and this is called activity. This is very similar to the interface on the Apple Watch. So you can see day, week, month, and year. This also transfers your goals from your Apple Watch to this device so it's all in one location. The health app is also integrating the app store. So for example, if you want to sleep your sleep analysis, there are apps that can track that and you can see them suggested right within the health app. One of the great things about the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus is live photo, but if you want to share that image, iOS has it made it easy to strip away the live photo feature. So if you don't want to share that, it's been kind of difficult to manage, but now iOS 9.3 makes that easier. So if we want to share this image here, 
uh, we can go and click next here. This gives us the option to duplicate. So this will duplicate the photo and we have the option here to either duplicate the photo as is or duplicate as a still photo. So this gives me a duplicate I can edit and it doesn't have the live photo feature built in. iBooks has also been updated with the ability to sync PDFs via iCloud. So if I save a PDF on this device, I can access it via iCloud and iBooks on another device. So right now I can see my PDFs right here and if I go to my iPad, they're all synced together. A really welcome new change with iOS 9.3 is the ability to add more than one Apple Watch. So previously you can only pair one at a time. And so now I can add as many Apple Watches as I want, but they do have to be updated to watch OS 2.2, which I haven't done yet. Verizon, among other carriers, has finally added Wi-Fi calling. So with iOS 9.3, that feature will be kicked in. You just have to go to phone, Wi-Fi calling, and enable that here. T-Mobile is capable of it right now, but I don't have an active T-Mobile SIM to show you. Also new under settings and under privacy is a new media library section. So this will show us apps that currently have access to our media library. Siri also picks up some new languages, which includes Finnish, Hebrew, and Malay. CarPlay has also been enhanced with iOS 9.3, which now displays new and for you items from Apple Music. So this stays synced with your Apple Music library. Maps has also been updated with a nearby feature, which allows you to see gas stations, parking, restaurants, coffee, and more with a tap. So this allows you to see nearby locations that you may want to see quickly. iOS 9.3 also introduces a new education platform for the iPad in the classroom. So there's a lot of tools going on here, which I can't demonstrate, but this allows for multiple users. So for example, if you have a a classroom full of students, you don't need an iPad for every student. They can grab any iPad and log in with their account, and that iPad is there as while they're logged in. This allows teachers to manage the accounts there as well so they can push lesson plans and assignments to those students. This will also allow teachers to control all iPads in the classroom, so if they're sharing a lesson plan, they'll see the same thing on each device. Alright guys, so that is going to do for me in this quick overview of what's new with iOS 9.3. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know, and I'll see you again in the next video.